So AMARC Resources, very simply put, we think this is the right company at the right time. Uh, we are absolutely focused on uh, discovering and developing and transacting the next generation of high-value copper mines in our home province of British Columbia. We've done it before with this team multiple times. We believe we can do it again. Very, very importantly, we've come into this year fully funded for extensive drill programs on all of our three copper districts. This is going to be a year of catalysts, and this is going to be a year of high news flow. So this is the standard cautionary and forward-looking statement for your information. So what do we have in our portfolio? We have three large copper districts. They're called the Joy, the Duke, and the Ike. They're in BC. They're 100% owned. They're serviced by infrastructure. They're clean of any royalties. And most importantly, each one of these districts is anchored on one or more known copper deposits. And it is backed up on e each district is backed up by a pipeline of copper deposit targets on which we have started to make discoveries. What that gives you as shareholders and also as transaction partners is incredible optionality at the corporate level, the district level, and the deposit level. We have Freeport McMoran, uh, one of the foremost copper producers globally, in on our Joy project, and Boliden, um, one of the main, uh, or the pre one of the premier European mining houses from Sweden, backing us on Duke. Uh, both of those companies on those projects can earn up to a 70% interest by expending up to 110 and 90 million dollars, respectfully. Um, that gives us access to 200 million dollars of non-share dilutive funding. We are the operators of both of those projects, which gives our team great, um, great credibility. On both of those projects with these funding partners, we've been out drilling, we've been out doing extensive airborne and ground surveys, and all of that is going to culminate in extensive drill programs, discovery drill programs on both of those uh, districts this year. The third district is our Ike district. We closed in, in you know, extremely challenging markets at the end of last year, an international financing, and it is our intent to be out drilling high-grade copper gold mineralization on that district this summer. So what do I mean by we're well-funded? We currently have 12 million in the treasury. This is the tip of the iceberg. We have further funding coming in this year that's already been secured, both in a corporate sense and through our JV projects. We are backed in AMARC by Hunter Dickinson. The Hunter Dickinson Group has had global success in discovery, development, and importantly, transaction. That is mainly in copper, and that is mainly in British Columbia. And all of that expertise feeds into AMARC. This is our team. I can tell you it is a privilege every day to go to work and work with this team. There is, this team is second to none in British Columbia uh, in terms of, uh, this gives us huge jurisdictional advantage and huge advantage in terms of copper gold exploration. So just to summarize before we have a look at our th three districts, we've got the right team, we've got great jurisdiction, we've got copper backed by gold, we're fully funded, We've got the likes of uh, Freeport and Boliden uh, giving credibility to our projects and funding us. So we're going to look at each district very fleetingly now. This is the Joy District. It is located in southern northern British Columbia. There's one thing I want to say about this slide. It's the schematic blue arrow. That arrow emanates uh, from the Golden Triangle and uh, where we have some world-class deposits such as Glor and Red Chris located. They are hosted by 200 million year old rocks. Those rocks actually extend throughout the district and down through the Kermess Mining District, with which members of the Hunter Dickinson team actually developed and transacted. So, uh, you know, geologists, we, we love our IP chargeability, uh, exploring for um, porphyry deposits. But what this is showing in all these hot colors, these are showing us sulfide systems. A lot of companies will only have one or two of these. We are developing trends of these systems with our partners, uh, Freeport. We are only going to look briefly at the pine trend. 
This is a vertical section through that trend. At the northeastern end, we have the pine deposit. It's a historical deposit. We have expanded it uh, to depth uh, internally, and we've expanded it laterally from 900 meters to 1.7 kilometers. It's still open. We go down the belt to the canyon copper gold porphyry discovery that we made with Freeport, uh, drilling a mainly blind target. We go down the belt to the twins deposit target. We put some initial holes in there. Uh, now the results we've got are not going to uh, light your hair on fire as uh, shareholders, but for exploration geologists like myself and our team and Freeport's team, we are very um, enthusiastic about this target that we're going to make more discoveries there and down to the SWT target. So to put this into context, and this is a slide lifted from a new Crest presentation at the PDAC in 2020, what do we mean by these trends? What are our goals here with Freeport? These are our goals. These porphyry systems, they develop in clusters along trends. And this is what we're doing. And, you know, as an exploration geologist, I look at this uh, cross-section and I think, God, the, the amount of guts and tenacity uh, that you have to have to, to develop these trends. So kudos to the teams that did this excellent work at uh, Cadia and Red Chris. So this is our goal with our partners, Freeport at Joy. So we're going to move on to our Duke District. This is located in the Babine region. It's a well-known and prolific uh, porphyry copper gold uh, region in British Columbia. Uh, you can see there the uh, ex-producers of Naranda, the Canadian mining house of Grand Isle and Bell. Our two main targets at the moment are the Duke deposit and the Svea deposit target. So this is what the landscape looks like here. Our Duke deposit actually sits in that uh, clear cut on the left-hand side in the, in the mid-ground. Uh, this is flat to gently undulating area. It's a big forestry area, lots of access right into deposits, right into our target areas. Uh, we also stay at forestry camps. This keeps all of our exploration costs down. Uh, if you don't drill, you don't discover. So we try to keep every dollar we can focused into drilling. This is a cross-section through the Duke deposit that we have been drilling with Belidon. Um, you know, this is a good, solid, moderate grade uh, copper uh, molly silver deposit. We have crews out on the ground as I'm speaking to you at the current time. They are prepping for recommencement of the delineation drilling at this deposit, which will happen in a few weeks time. Our tenure here, if you remember, an earlier slide is over 700 square kilometers. That tenure is 90 kilometers long. You can see the location of the Duke deposit. Up in the north, we put out a release this morning on our Svea deposit target. It is about seven uh, square kilometers sulfide system. There's layer upon layer of information I haven't got time to go into here, but it's sharing many, many attributes uh, that are consistent with the Bell and Grand Isle, the known deposits in this district. The yellow stars represent other targets we'll be out drilling this summer, and uh, the, the gray squares are our pipeline of targets. We will be drilling out there now, uh, February and March, we'll take a break uh, during uh, breakup, and then we'll be back out doing our summer season drilling at Svea and also uh, over these yellow target areas. So Duke, we can drill and work on year round. So there'll be news flow starting to come out drilling wise from the company here shortly. So the last district I want to talk to you about is, is the Ike District. This is the one that AMARC has chosen, uh, as Bob Dickinson, my executive chair, would say, to drive our own bus on. Uh, it's located in southern British Columbia. Uh, this is the heartland of copper production, not only in the province, but also in Canada. Uh, it's serviced by excellent infrastructure, which goes straight down to the port here in Vancouver. It's anchored on two known deposits. One is the Ike, one is the Empress. You can see them in red stars on the left-hand side of the screen. 
In the foreground, we have our Ike deposit discovery. This is a copper, moly, silver porphyry. We put 26 long drills holes into it. We have hit long, consistent intercepts of copper and moly and silver over one kilometer by 1.2 kilometers by a vertical extent of 700 meters. It's open to expansion. We want to get back on the ground here, do infill drilling, get a resource out, do a PEA, but that's not where we want to start. Um, as Brian mentioned, we've had some inertia in our stock in the in the company where we're heading, where our intent is to head out to first this year to look at the Empress and the Empress East deposits. These are historical uh, deposits. You can see Ike is on the, uh, like located in the bottom or the southern part of this figure. And as we go towards this blue line, which is the boundary between intrusive rocks to the south and volcanic rocks to the north, all the porphyries and these systems become progressively more gold in rich until we get to Empress and Empress East, and these are true copper gold replacement style deposits. We're going to uh, look in a minute at a cross section through Empress and Empress East. It's a two kilometer section of a 15 kilometer strike length along this blue boundary, which has potential for high grade copper gold mineralization. What do we mean by high grade? We mean intercepts 70, 80 meters, a gram of gold, a multiple percent, uh, multiple grams of gold, a percent of copper with moly and silver at realistic recoveries. This gives us copper equivalents of one to three percent. So zooming in on Empress and Empress East, these are historical deposits. Both of those we feel that we can expand internally and laterally. There's a one kilometer gap between them, which we've named the Empress Gap. And everything that we have, all the geological information and historical drilling is telling us to go and drill that gap. And there's a possibility these uh, deposits might coalesce with this high grade mineralization. So uh, in summary, uh, we've got the right team, the right jurisdiction. We've got copper backed by gold. Uh, we, we're fully funded. We've got Bleedon. We've got Freeport. We funded ourselves on Ike. Lots of catalysts, lots of news flow this year. So thank you for your time and attention. We're actually at a booth uh, in the room uh, to the right. I'm here with Bob Dickinson. And uh, lastly, Brian, thank you very much for the invite to speak. Thank you.